Welcome to your daily update on all the different things that I'm doing that aren't writing a novel. Today has been a day with more than a few distractions in it, but it's not been such a bad day. I've actually spent quite a lot of time today helping people out with some coding stuff, which, while it doesn't help me to get a novel written, I think it's still a useful thing to do, stops my skills getting rusty. And I've also um, been on quite a long walk, which was pretty interesting actually. I got some nice photos and all that stuff, but we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about the novel. I have a t-shirt that says I'm a writer, see? Which means that I should actually be writing, and I have done a few words. Um, in between attempting to edit yesterday's video, which is still awaiting uploading. I've continued with the story of George who's about to get mugged. I, I quite liked this paragraph, but I don't know if it'll seem as good when I read it back, so what do you think? Not tonight, he whispered, not even a thought going into the words. He wasn't religious, neither of his mothers believed in any kind of God. But when he couldn't think of a rational way to keep himself safe, the prayers seemed to emerge from his lips all by itself. Not addressed to any kind of cosmic patron he believed in, but a simple plea to any supernatural entities who might be listening. Please, let me get home safely. He didn't expect a response. There was no way that the distant mugger, or whoever else might be stalking him, could even hear that he'd spoken over that distance. But his voice was heard. He didn't hear any kind of response, the sound of running footsteps in a deep echoing stairwell would have been drowned out by the slow creaking of timbers as the building settled, if it weren't completely masked by thick stone walls. But help was coming. It wasn't the help of a vigilante stepping out to protect him, but the instinctive response of a passerby who didn't have time for second thoughts. An instinctive movement that she already knew she was going to regret later. Okay, that's that's a little clunky because there's a repetition of instinctive, but I, I think I quite like that. It's a little too um, flowery. I'm not sure that description will stay in, but I do quite like it. That's the thing, you, you've got to get the level of description and the types of metaphor to fit the situation but um, I, I think that's reasonable in case you haven't guessed it's Yuki coming to save him she's up on the roof and she heard him pleading for help we already know she has incredibly good hearing now whether she comes and faces off against whoever's following him or if she's going to come to him and say, you need to get out of here, I'm not sure. Because I was thinking that she could engage the drinker without him even seeing. But now that I've started the scene from his perspective, it would seem kind of anticlimactic if he didn't get to see what's going on. If he's still in the dark, there's no reason for the scene to go like that, if that makes sense. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out, but she is going to save him or at least take him away so the drinker can find him later, which of course gives me um, a reason to get her involved and in following the drinker. But anyway... I've not written much today, I've only written a little bit, but it's better than nothing. So, um, if you want to see the other bits I've written, because that's not all of it, but that's most of it. Um, if you want to see the other bits I've written, there should be a link down there in the description. Um, and underneath that, there should be a comment section where you can leave me a message to let me know you're watching. Or if you'd rather watch more of my videos, then there should be a link to yesterday's and when I've finished doing it there should be links to tomorrow's and there might even be a link to the entire playlist which has got all of them in. 
but um, that's all I've got to say for today. So bye and I'll see you around.